Hey everyone, Synology announced today that they will be releasing DSM-7 on June 29th. Now that's pretty big news because when you go to the software update page on your NAS, you're going to be prompted to install DSM-7. So today we're going to take a look at if you should update right away or if maybe you should wait a little bit to make sure that everyone's upgrade process goes properly. So we're first going to take a step back and we're going to look at how enterprises normally upgrade servers. Um, because I think it will help clarify how you can potentially try and protect yourself. So in a traditional enterprise environment, you will have at minimum two servers and potentially upwards of three or four, which are used as sandbox, staging, and production environments. So the sandbox environment is where you're generally going to run through and you're going to test everything out. And when you're ready, you then promote those changes to your uh, staging environment and if everything goes well then you will then promote the changes to the production environment so from a nas perspective when say dsm7 is released you would have a uh, your production environment it will be mirrored on your staging and your sandbox environment so you would upgrade your sandbox environment test it out see what works see what doesn't work migrated then at that point you would upgrade your staging environment make sure that goes properly and that staging environment upgrade should be basically a one-to-one -one mirror of what the production upgrade would be so you're basically testing the production upgrade before you actually update production production is the last step you're going to upgrade it when you're sure that all the bugs are ironed out now, in a traditional home environment, you're not going to have sandbox staging and production environments. You might only have a production environment. So when an update like this is released, the first question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to be the first person on the block with it? And for a lot of people, the answer to that is going to be yes. So we're going to take a look in a little bit at how you can protect yourself during that upgrade process. Uh, but if you're not one of those people and you don't need to be first on the block and you don't want to actually install it on your NAS right away, it doesn't hurt to wait. Um, according to Reddit, there have been users that have had issues with Docker uh, on DSM-7 and a few other things, but generally the core operating system has been stable. So if you do upgrade, you shouldn't run into any problems. This is the final release version, so bugs should be at least at a minimum. Um, they probably will still exist, but hopefully they are very few. But you do have to keep in mind that some of those packages like Docker, uh, Plex, for example, those could run into different issues. And if you're relying on those, you might want to wait a little bit to install this upgrade. So if we take a step back to our enterprise example, everything is upgraded in that order to try and limit potential issues that might arise. Now, that's not to say that production servers never have issues during upgrade, but it is to say that you're hopefully trying to iron them all out because you do have, you know, a mirrored environment. For home users, if you decide that you want to upgrade DSM-7 on June 29th, you can, but I want to make sure that you do a few things. And unfortunately, I can't guarantee that you're not going to run into any problems. Um, so you're going to have to use your best judgment and decide what you think is best. Um, so that's a little disclaimer there. But these are some of the things I think you can do to try and protect yourself in case any issues do arise. So the first thing that you have to try and do is get a backup of your most important data. So on your NAS, you're probably going to have services installed like Active Backup for Business or other tools that will back up PCs to your NAS. Now those files are important, but they're not necessarily as important as the data that is stored on your NAS. So the first thing that you should do is take a backup of your NAS. If you could take a backup of the entire thing, that would be best. Uh, but if you can't take a backup of the most important information for this specific scenario, using something like an external hard drive is fine. Um, traditionally, you want to have the three to one backup rule and you do want to have three copies of your data on two mediums with one off site. But backing up your entire NAS to the cloud could be one time consuming and too expensive. So this is one of those rare circumstances where if you back up everything using, say, hyper backup to an external hard drive in a catastrophic event where the upgrade goes horribly and you lose your entire NAS, you still have that hyper backup archive that you can eventually restore to whenever you get your NAS up and running. Now, your data obviously is the most important, but then secondary to that might be your configuration. 
Now, I'm going to be totally transparent and say that I'm not entirely sure how a backup of your configuration on DSM-6 will translate to DSM-7. I would hope that it functions the exact same way and that when you import it, it will import properly. So this is something that I can't guarantee will help, but it also can't hurt to take a backup of it. So what you can do is open up your uh, control panel, go to update and restore, and then configuration backup. At that point, you can select the backup configuration button. What that's gonna do is that is gonna download a file on your local device. Just keep that file, and if for whatever reason you have to restore, you can go into the same location, you can select restore configuration, select that file, and then it will hopefully restore everything exactly as it is now. So like I said before, I cannot guarantee you that backing up your configuration on DSM-6 and restoring it on DSM-7 will function the way that it should. But for something as quick as this is, it definitely does not hurt to do. So now that we took a look at how you should back up your data and how you can back up your configuration, we're going to look at how you can try and basically run through the installation without having a mirrored environment on your NAS. So what I mean by that is I have a video on how you can install DSM on a virtual machine. I'll leave a pop up for that now. But if you install DSM 6, you'll be able to run through the install process and see how it installs DSM 7. Now you can try and get that virtual machine to be as close to your production environment as you would like. Um, and if you can get it to hold all of your data, that would be even better because then at that point you can run the update and hopefully you'll be a little bit more confident in it. It will still be upgrading a virtual machine as opposed to upgrading the physical hardware, but it's a little bit closer um, than you know, upgrading the SM6 on that virtual machine without your configurations on that. Um, but it doesn't hurt to do. So I would recommend that if you want to see the install process, you install DSM-6 on a virtual machine. When June 29th rolls around, you can go through and you can upgrade that to DSM-7. You're going to see how it updates. You're going to see how it installs. Maybe it's going to point something out that you should you know, look out for. But overall, at least you'll be able to see the process. I know that a lot of this probably sounds like overkill, and to a lot of people it probably is, but for most people, NAS devices are purchased to be rock solid devices that generally don't run into any issues. They store your data, they run for long periods of time without having to be rebooted. You know, the idea is that they're that rock solid device that you have on your local network that you don't really have to monitor too much. Because if you did want to tinker, you might want to look into running something like TrueNAS. Um, something that would give you the flexibility to purchase your own hardware and install it how you'd like. Uh, but for most people, you purchase a Synology because you don't want to have to deal with that. So this upgrade process is probably the biggest update you're going to run since the DSM-5 to DSM-6 update. And for a lot of people, you might not have even had to run that. So hopefully this helped. Like I said, I unfortunately can't guarantee that you're not going to have any problems. But you can do a few things to try and protect yourself in case you do. So if this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.